Hello viewers, welcome to this video. I'm Venkat and this is Just Me, an open source channel. Right, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a user account. So once uh, you have created your, uh, you have signed up for your AWS free tier account, which I showed in my previous video, uh, you need to create a user account. So it's not a good practice to use the root account. The account that you signed up with your email ID. So once you go to AWS console and you log in, you enter your email ID and with your password. Um, so by which email ID you registered uh, for an AWS free tier account. So that's called the root account, uh, the uh, the admin account, which has got access to all the resources, including billing and everything. So it's not always a good practice to use the root account for doing day-to-day -day tasks. So we need to create an additional user um, and then we can we should start using uh, that user for creating resources and everything so that user won't have access to the uh, billing but will have full admin access so that's the idea um, for this video we are going to create a new admin user and we are going to use that user for all our future videos if needed we can create additional users so I've logged into my uh, AWS console with my root account so my account is just me and open source same as my YouTube channel here you can see my billing dashboard um, you can you will see the billing dashboard now yes that's all working good and you can see all those uh, details so what you're gonna do now is to create a new user go to services and search for IAM click IAM identity and access management so at the moment there are no users there's just one user which is the root user okay so uh, go to users click add user and then you enter the username so let's say test user access type um, AWS management console access so if you check this option uh, that user will be able to log into AWS uh, management console through the web interface by entering his username and password uh, but if you want programmatic access for example if you're using AWS CLI or you're using AWS SDK or you're using Terraform to provision resources in your AWS uh, you would need a programmatic access as well so that will give you an access key ID and a secret access key um, so I'm planning to do another video maybe the next video will be on AWS CLI so whatever you do in uh, through the management console you can do from the command line AWS CLI so going forward uh, I'll try and do for most of the videos that I'm going to show you uh, in this series I'll show you the equivalent way to do it from the command line AWS CLI so for that we need programmatic access as well okay so let's create uh, this user test user and let's give him AWS management console access auto generated password or custom password let's say custom password let's uh, give it a password okay require password reset user must create a new password at next sign-in which I don't want because I'm already setting a custom password okay I'm gonna uncheck this one and I'm also going to check programmatic access so that will give me an access key and secret key uh, which I can use uh, from the command line to access the AWS uh, through API okay so next we are going to create the permissions okay so there are a few different options here you can add the user to a group and you can create permissions for the group not for the individual users so if you're going to create multiple users you don't want to uh, modify every single user you don't want to assign permissions to every single user so that's a management overhead so instead you can create a group and you can assign permissions to that group so any user you create in the future and if you assign it that to this group they will inherit the permissions from the group so you don't have to do that um, on the user basis okay or if you've already got an existing user with all the desired permissions you can copy that copy permissions from existing user so since we don't have any user uh, we don't see anything here add user to group or attach existing policies directly to the user so let me show you how you do that attaching existing policies directly so these are some predefined policies that you can select or attach 
or if you want you can create your own policy maybe in one of my future videos I'll show you how to create a policy okay so if you want to create a policy there are a couple of ways it will show you a wizard where you can select uh, the type of resources the type of actions they can perform and whether the actions are allowed or denied and so on or if you are an expert you can write your JSON policy file yourself so for now I'm going to use one of the existing Amazon provided policies so you can search any policies for example if I search s3 it's showing me Amazon s3 full access Amazon s3 read only and if I select this one if I expand this one so that's the policy and if I scroll down so it includes Amazon s3 read only uh, quick site access and all those things and if I scroll up and look at the JSON so that's the JSON file which says resource is star any resource action s3 so the ARN Amazon resource name identifier or something so s3 dot star and the effect is allow so that's given full access to s3 the resource what specific resource you want and what action you're going to perform on that resource and what's the effect whether you want to allow or deny so that's how you will write your JSON if you are to create your own policy okay let's go back we are trying to create an admin user so there is uh, if you search for admin so that's here the administrator user and if you expand that look at the JSON file it says resource star any resource action any action effect is allow so it's basically an admin user so let's go ahead and use that one so I'm going to select that and then next tax so you can assign tax to any resource any resource that you deploy in AWS you can assign tax whether it's an EC2 instance or a load balancer or an auto scaling group any type of resource you can assign key value you can assign basically tax tax are really helpful when it comes to um, cost reports and the estimations and budgets and so on so for example you've got a different teams uh, in your organization and you can say team is development or you can say project is Android or something else and then finally uh, when it comes to the report generating your cost reports you can um, look at project wise or team wise so when you select project all the resources that you have tagged under project Android will sum up for that uh, resource so when it comes to cost reports estimates budgets and everything and lots of other things it's always a good idea to add some tags to all the resources that you create in AWS okay so let me just add one tag here next is review okay so that's good create user okay so the user has been created successfully so there it is let's expand it created user so that's the uh, uh, the list of events that happened so that's the access key and secret access key is here okay if you want you can send email you can send these as a um, as an email access key and secret key as I told uh, in my previous video it's required uh, if you want programmatic access to uh, your AWS console which I will show you in one of my future videos okay so make sure to copy the access key and secret access key if you want okay let's close this window and there is this test user users dashboard if you go back to dashboard so there is now one user and the other thing I wanted to point out is activate multi-factor authentication on your root account so it says currently it's warning because we haven't enabled multi-factor authentication so it's especially useful on your root account to keep it very secure multi-factor authentication means uh, so in addition to the password that you supply during login you're also required to uh, provide additional details like a six-digit code a virtual uh, you can install an app in your Android or iOS um, device uh, which is a virtual secure app uh, that will generate a six-digit code which you need to enter in addition to your password 
So if you want, go ahead and activate multi-factor authentication on your root account. Okay, cool. So how would you log in uh, to AWS console as this user we just created? Okay, so I already customized this sign-in link. If you want to log in as one of the new users that you created, you need to use this sign-in link. Because if you just go to AWS console and try to sign in, that will be different. You need to enter your email ID and password, which uh, will log you into your root account. But if you want to log in using any of the user accounts that you created, so that's the custom URL for signing in. So when you create that one, you might see something different. So you will have your AWS account ID, which is, which might be very difficult to remember. So what I suggest you is customize it. And uh, so I've already done the account alias, but when you customize it, it will ask you for an account alias. So give it any name. So now that's the meaningful name, uh, signing sign in link for your account. I'm going to copy that. That's copied. Let me log out of this root account. Sign out. And now we are going to sign back in my account, AWS Management Console. So now it says sign in to a different account. So it always asks you for email ID and password, which is going to work only for your root account. If you want to log in as the user that you just created, you have to use the custom URL that you got. Okay, so that's the custom URL. So now you can see the account ID or account alias is just me an open source and the test user that I created is test user and the password. Okay, so I'm signing in now. Now you can see on the top right here, test user at my account alias. So that's my account and it, that's an admin user. It has got full access. But if I try to go to billing dashboard, Um, this is what you will see. You need permissions. So this admin user won't have access to the billing dashboard. Okay, so that's how you create your user account. So that's a best practice. So once you sign up for your AWS account, never use your uh, root account. So always create an additional admin account and use that admin account to play with your AWS console. Okay, cool. That's it for this video. I will see you all in another video. Bye-bye.